talking about. Game to Philly, just like Big U got on the radio with his son. With Big U getting on radio. <laughs> Hey, yo, 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 you already know what it is. your man, Big O. Right now, you watching Hood Life Media. Oh, all right. What up, though? Slick! Hey, yo, you know what's going on? Shout out to Hood Life. Why, my Bermuda, yay, man. Yo. Tell me what you know about the Hood Life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 you already, man. We sitting here with a special one, man. Yeah. Definitely one of the moves, lyrical. Four door Maserati in public housing. Stamp my passport in October and touch the island. Just to put a hole in your head. I was taught to stay low, get the bread, watch it accumulate. Diamonds all through the face. It's only right I do the wraith. Your whole team winning, they don't know who to hate. One of the most polished artists I feel like to ever do it when it comes to the pen and pad. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, introduce yourself to the people who ain't too familiar with you. Hey, yo, you already know what it is. B I G, double O to the H, big O. You hear me? What up, though, Slick? So I ain't gonna lie, man. You've been doing your thing for a minute. Um, for, for the ones who are not too familiar, take them back where you come from and um, talk about your, like, your young boy days a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. Been grinding for a minute, moving around, working, putting in the work, been doing it since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Giving it up. Putting it together, you hear me? That's, that's all, that's all. So what was it like for Trenton? Cause that's definitely like rough for, for you. Y'all just like us for real. Facts. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, any other in the city, you know what I mean? Like bullshit, you know what I mean? Losing niggas left and right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that shit be, bro. So, so what was that for like you coming up on? Um, Cause it's definitely different as far as just like, you don't really notice it until you get older, but when we coming up, it's just normal. So what, what was that for like you coming up just losing friends, things like that? Hey, yo, you don't even realize the shit you're going through because, like you said, it's normal to you when you're stuck in that environment, not to you move around and get around different environments. You realize that this, you know what I mean, the way we're accustomed to living ain't regular, it ain't normal. You know what I mean? That's just, you know what I mean, come with the aging, moving around different atmospheres, different environments, being around different people from different walks of life and appreciating life way more, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, facts, though. So when did you first start getting involved uh with the music, who were some of your first influences? Uh, my first influences, I've been doing music since I was like 12. My, my, my first influences um, was like, of course, Biggie, Jay-Z, Nas, you know what I mean, the locks, that type of people, that type of people. First people I seen with my own eyes was like Fatal Hussein, rest in peace of Fatal, he was with the Outlaws, Tupac, you know what I mean, even from my, my pop way. Um, Jaheen, one of the first people I seen, you know what I mean, people like that that influenced me. Hands on that I can see, but yeah. Do you remember when you wrote your first rap? Yeah, I wrote my first rap. Damn, that was a while ago. I was a kid. That shit was trash. I was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was trash, yeah. Mm hmm. But I know it's definitely like, it's like when you young and you sitting there putting it together, then to think about how far you came now, it's like crazy to uh, pretty much see things like that. Yeah, I used to have notebooks with them. I used to have notebooks with them. Raps and raps and the notebooks. I used to be up all night, but you know it just a, it's a test. It's a it's a it's a testimony just to putting in the work too, though. You know what I mean? You get a chance to look back at where you started to where you at now, and knowing that you still got a ways to go. But you know what I mean? Nothing happens overnight. Anything come with putting in the work. I've been I've been putting in the work for years. Anybody that know me know that. You know what I mean? No, oh, it's a fact though. So before we move forward, take them back. Who was some of them? Um, like them Trenton legends and. Like that, as we got the theme music in the background. Right. <laughs> who who were some of them guys that like you used to look up to, or, or some of them legendary figures who pretty much had a name but ain't pretty much like make it out? Of course, Don Black. Don Black was one of the artists um, from around my way. He used to be on all the doo wop mixtapes back in the day. He was signed to MCA, signed to Rough Nation. My man Mike Molest was signed to Soul Life. Um, a lot of people, man. Goldfingers was signed with Capone and Nori was signed in Nori, Thug Down Militainment. We had Wise Intelligence for sure, for sure. PRT, Poor Righteous Teachers, my my uncle, Uncle Loud Boulevard Massey. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a hell of a hip hop community in Trenton, the history in Trenton. You know what I mean? It's a lot of new artists that's grinding right now, too. I'm in the studio right now, my man BH. You know what I'm saying? New artists from the town that's grinding, putting together this record, so for sure. Awesome. So, um, 
talk about when things first got real for you for real, for real, as far as the music because you always been doing your thing but what was the point where things really got serious for you um things got serious for me when i went to when i went to atlanta shout out to my man key song he had me come down to the a i ended up signing my first deal in atlanta and that was my first time really getting a piece of the industry you know what i mean um things didn't go as planned i was forced to leave a condo 18 floors up moved back to the projects on my way but it was a, it was a, it was a life lesson. It was experience. I had made a lot of valuable relationships, and when I came back, I mean, me and everybody, my whole circle, we was in my crib, and I was like, "Yo, I gotta touch Philly," because you know, at the end of the day, train the Central Jersey, you know what I mean? So it's between North Jersey and South Jersey. Our market is Philadelphia, though. You know what I'm saying? So I said when I came back from the A, I gotta touch Philly. I gotta get my name popping in Philly. I Cosmic Cab gotta know who I am, man. Keep going, yeah. keep going, come this on. This thing of hours, real ones, never get the flowers. His and her sinks, jacuzzi tub, marble showers. Right. Life's to be lived. They think it's slick when they cross the bridge. Uh. They show my man straight while he bids. So when I came into the Philadelphia market, I came in with Gilly. I came in with Meek. I came in with Tone Trump. And then everything after that was like, everything after that was just, you know what I mean? And rest in peace, my nigga Jimmy Wall Street, for sure. Thanks. I want to salute you because um, definitely as far as understanding the business side as far as artists and targeting your audience and things like that that's kind of hard for a lot of artists to figure out you know what's their core audience so um i want to salute you for that so talk about you first making your way to philly definitely like similar in the same but you know philly like a little geographical and things like that so how was it for you um you know what i'm saying at the end of the day you know i've been in the studio with all the guys from philly and i mean we always be big you know what I'm saying? Be like, you know, because how Philly look at Jersey a certain way. You feel like Y'all be thinking Chevy Hill when y'all think Jersey. I be telling niggas, like, it's the trenches everywhere. It's funky everywhere. You know what I mean? But just the fact of the love that I get from Philly is all love. Like, you know, I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. I ain't never seen a nigga from out of my way get the love that I get. You know what I mean? In Philly. That's like me. What are you talking about? Because if they did, that shit would have came to Philly just like Big got on the Radio That's not true. It was no issues with Big U getting on with Big U getting on radio. <laughs> what are you talking yeah, about? Big U stayed on. The f yeah. Hip hop. No. Mm -hmm. Yo, yo, yo. Did a silk scarf and Rambo, but it ain't camo. The young niggas not the Kim Love, Trey Bando, no. Slate Chapo and Trey Twiz. Homies coming home from state bids. Some coming home from Fed time. Uh, you gotta open up before your headline. Get accepted the way I did. And Philly's a big market in the music industry period so it's humbling it's love and it's just a testament like for people to say this is the land of the spitters and for them to embrace me like that and saying something you know what i'm saying so it's definitely love and i definitely appreciate it for sure and i'm just being me i ain't never been nothing other than self a lot of niggas put on costumes and all that when they come into the room and all that goofy shit, i just be me bro you either gonna me or you ain't you know what i'm saying fact, that's one thing is like we when you amongst certain individuals, like you can smell when somebody ain't really like you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, we respect bars. If you hot, it, it don't matter what's going on for real, for real. You know saying as long as you sturdy. That's a fact. So what was some of the reactions you get when you first start rapping and people start hearing them lines and and that flow and shit like that? Hey, yo, yeah, I mean that'd be like the when the people, when the legends, when the people that I looked up to. Cause you gotta think, right? We was heavy major figures like up my way. That shit was heavy, state prop and all that. So when I get around them niggas and they giving me the feedback and showing me the love, it's just like, imagine looking up to AI, you used to hang up the AI posters in your, in your room and then AI comment, commenting on, commentating on your game, mm -hmm. talking about your crossover, talking about your no look pass or some shit. That shit is like, you know what I mean? It's the same shit, the rap shit, you know what I mean? Back though. Now, how did you feel when and the industry kind of getting back to the bars a little more, but how did you feel when like, you know, you a heavy, heavy spitter, but it's like the mumble rap was being rewarded and things like that. It was a heavy era of that. So how was you feeling during that time? Man, it was frustrating, of course, but at the same time, man, the game is just like, you just got to feed your fan base. There's people out there that's going to love. There's just a million people out there that love what you do. You just got to make them aware of what you're doing and make them aware of you and feed your fan base. You can't get lost in trying to do what people, people look at as, a, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. It's like, I don't make records. I'm not a 15 year old, so I'm not going to make records for, I may not make a record for a 15 year old, and that's cool. Right. You know what I mean? 
Facts though. So what was some of your um best moments coming up and then some of your um, you know, some of the worst moments for you? Um, some of my best moments. Man, that's a good question. Um, probably when I met Kiss. Hey, that old man big all that money, bam. Hey, you see what it is. Hey, Don't act like your ears ain't work now. Yeah. Get my niggas money. Yeah. That's all, yeah. In the studio, I met Kiss in Philly. In the studio, he walked in, my verse was playing. Um, with Gail, for sure, for sure. Had Gail in the trenches. Charlie Mack in the project. That's different, man. Yeah, man. I want to shout out to y'all for that because Charlie Mack, he don't just pull up for anybody. All facts. I had Charlie Mack on, on Eisenhower in the projects, Wilson Holmes. Um, with Meek early on. Heavy. You know what I'm saying? And some of my worst, you said, what's my, my worst, yeah, worst experience? Losing niggas that you love and this shit. Like my man, Young Far, talking to Wall Street the day he, the day he was murdered. You know what I mean? I talked to him that morning. Shit like that, you don't never, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that never leave you. You know what I'm saying? Word up. I want you to give some advice to artists because I work with a lot of artists and I try to tell them um, the ones who I feel like is successful is the ones who are able to balance the reality in the artistry, for real, for real. So talk about that as far as, you know, you dealing with real life losses and things like that, but at the same time, you still gotta be an artist. Mm -hmm. So talk about just balancing your craft and your reality. Sometimes you just gotta take a mental break. You know what I mean? And you can't get lost in it. You can't do what you see other artists doing. And you gotta realize that a lot of this, the game is fake, man. A lot of these viral moments are prepared. A lot of the things you think are happening organically ain't organic, it's business taking place behind the scenes. And once you understand that aspect of the game, you'll look at everything different, you know what I'm saying? We can't chase nobody else's moments but ours. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, the, that's the jewel to take out of everything. You know what I mean? Trust the process, every day, one day at a time, man, just keep going, never stop. They say that's the only difference between the people that go and the people that don't. You know what I mean? Some people quit, the ones that make it never stop, you know what I mean? So one of my last questions, why do you feel like um, you spoke of earlier, you know, people look at jerseys, especially like Philly as a certain type of way. Why do you feel like um, Jersey has like a certain stigma and things like that? Well, at the end of the day, right, um, a lot of people just never been out there. You know what I mean? And then some people just know they just know their environment. You know what I mean? So it's like until you venture out and travel to different places and realize that there's murderers everywhere. It's rats everywhere. It's, you know what I mean? It's real niggas everywhere. It's fake niggas everywhere. So it's just like, once you realize that aspect of it, you understand what you're dealing with. And I want to piggyback off of that because that's a fact because it's like, we never looked at Chicago as like the trenches until Chief Keith came. Right. And, and, so, and a lot of times too, the music gives, gives us the avenue to do the backstory. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's not, it hasn't been many artists from my city anyway that have took it to the next level as of lately, you know what I mean? So it's like now that we come in and we introducing the city again and we got hella artists out there and producers and that makes people want to do the backstory behind the music, you know what I mean? Right. So, and the last Jones, what's some advice you can give to the youth, just in general? Some advice to the youth? Yeah. Be yourself, man. Be yourself. It's a lot of motherfuckers in that dirt, a lot of motherfuckers on the wall coming down off them highs that was chasing shit that they, they knew wasn't for them, man. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know who you are more than anybody. Be your motherfucking self, man. You know what I mean? And get out the car, nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I Everybody wants to slide until they get real, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit sound good. So the people come see you. Be yourself, man. You can't never lose being yourself, bro. That's a fact.